What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and in one of the latest videos we've looked at this Opto 22 Groove Epic PLC. So today what I wanted to do is show you how to load the software that's going to be used for programming this controller and it's called a PAC Control Basic that you can get actually for free but we'll get into that a bit later and then you can start controlling or essentially writing programs that are going to be controlling the inputs and outputs of this PLC and in this specific tutorial we're going to be loading the IP address on the controller interfacing from the computer to the PLC loading the program onto it and I'm going to be showing you step by step how you can write the program and ultimately the goal is going to be to create a program that's going to cycle through different outputs so at this point we have no external hardware connected to the controller but we will be doing that in the subsequent tutorials without any further delay let's get into the settings that we haven't finalized in the previous video and then jump into programming a few controls before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. All right, so here we are logged into our Groove Epic controller. And as you can see by the title, we are currently on the home page of Groove Manage. From here we need to set the IP address of our controller in order to be able to connect from a computer. So what I'm going to do is press system. Next I'm going to press network up here and you'll notice that there's going to be essentially three ways of connecting to this specific controller which are going to be hardwired through Ethernet 0, 1 and or Wi-Fi. Now I'm going to be connecting with a regular RJ45 cable onto my private home network. So what I have to do or what I had to do is set an IP address but we're going to click on this configure button and this is where you can change the settings of your IP address as well as the subnet mask. So of course you can click that field and give the controller a new IP address. I'm going to click cancel because that's going to be the IP of my specific controller and you can also give it a subnet mask. Once you hit save, you'll notice that the PLC is going to take the address in and it's going to take a few moments to restart. But the next thing we're going to have to do is essentially plug in an RJ45 cable that's going to go from this controller to the computer. And in my case, like I've mentioned, it's going to go through an unmanaged switch. So I have a bunch of devices that you see also behind me going back to the controller and to my laptop, but ultimately we're going to push back the LCD screen. You'll notice that there's going to be little labels right here and you'll find two ethernet ports. The front one is going to be number zero, the back one number one. Once we put back the LCD screen in place, you'll notice that the link status is now connected. And that's of course because there's now a signal between the controller and the switch. So we can now go into the web interface in order to see the status of our controller. All right, so what's really cool about the Groove Epic PLC is that you can enter the IP address that we've set on the controller in a regular browser. So I'm personally using Google Chrome and you can see the same status that you would see on the LCD screen within the web application. Now, what we've done is we've set the IP address and you can change that from here. But what's really important for us to do is to go into the controller settings. And like I've said, we're going to work with the PAC controller application so we can click on this specific menu and we'll notice that the status is currently set to running so we definitely need to make sure that it's running we can go into some configurations but we're not going to bother with that today we can also see the strategies that are running and strategies are essentially the programs inside of PAC controller applications and we can see that there's currently none so we're going to be uploading one to this controller and look at how to build them from scratch let's do that right now so if you're interested in following along or you have a controller that supports PAC Control Basic, I definitely recommend that you download the software. You can see the URL on top here. It is a free licensed software. There is a pro version available as well. So you can go into the PAC Control Basic or PLC Control Pro. That being said, we're going to be working with the basic version of the software. You can download it directly from this page and then install it onto your computer. And let's launch the application and see what the inf interface looks like and start our program. All right, so here's the interface of PAC Control Basic, fairly straightforward to install. 
let's go into file and we're going to create a new strategy. As I've mentioned, a strategy is essentially a program within this specific environment. And I'm going to just call that the next name. So Groove Epic PAC Flow 2. As you can see, I've already tested a different program. So we're going to click open and we're going to get a very basic interface on our screen. We're going to explore that in just a second. So what I do need to uh, add is we're going to go into control engines and I'm going to right click, select add. And here we're going to browse for our controller. So I've already added my system, but you can essentially add a new system and then reconfigure it. What I'm going to do is display how that can be interfaced. So you'll notice that I just gave it a name. It is a standard system type. You'll notice that on a redundant network or on a redundant controller, you're going to require the pro version. That being said, you can give it an IP address. I left the port as it was and these settings as they were as well. We're going to click OK. So I'm going to add that into our program. I'm going to sorry, I'm going to not modify it. I'm going to select it and then press OK. OK. So now that's within our control for the program. Now you'll notice that our program is going to launch into this block zero. There's going to be a little bit of a difference on how you can navigate these blocks. I'm just going to scroll it all the way into the left topmost corner of my screen. And you can use the thumb wheel to scroll up and down. And then if you hold control and use the scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out just like you would in most AutoCAD applications. So what you need to understand is that this essentially system or this programming works in blocks. So what we're going to do is first of all, we're going to look at the charts and charts are essentially subroutines or the analogous of subroutines in RS Logics 5000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new chart that we're going to run as the main program. So let's call it main program. OK, and as you can see, the same exact block is also in my program. This will all become very, very uh, apparent in just a few moments. So let's go back into power up. And so what we're going to create is a block that will transition us to the main program. So again, similar to jump subroutine. So I'm going to click on this blue block. I'm going to position it here. I'm going to press escape in order to leave that menu. And I'm going to create this little arrow. So connection from block zero to block one. And essentially, if you're curious, what happens on the Groove Epic PLC is that block zero starts to execute, and then it leads to anything that will be executing afterwards through this little arrow. I'm going to select block one, right click, or you can double click as well. And so what that's going to give me is a menu through which I can execute different instructions. So let's press on add and see what's available to us. Once I press on add, we can either select an instruction from this menu or we can click on select in order to get a menu that's a little bit more detailed. So here what I need to do is to jump into the different chart that is called the main program. So I'm going to select chart and I'm going to select call chart. OK. And calling a chart is essentially sending the controller to execute that specific type. And we're going to select chart main program right there. And status is going to be put on an integer 32 variable. So essentially, if you want to know which chart you're currently in, you can call this specific variable. So we're going to say that current chart, and it's going to ask us to create that. So I'm going to click OK. Do you wish to add now? Yes. Let's see. OK. And you'll notice that what we're going to do is essentially jump to the main program. And that's all we wanted to do. So I'm going to close out of this and let's go to our main program. I'm going to just move this right here and let's explore some of the other blocks and essentially talk about the software that we need to create. So what I'm trying to create is a software that's going to allow us to press the button on the Opto 22 and then transition us through the different outputs. So let's go back into the Opto 22 controller interface and we're going to go back into the home screen and we're going to look at the IO. So remember in the first video, we've looked at the digital inputs specified here, digital outputs, analog inputs and analog inputs. Now, like I've said, we need to detect the press of the button. So the press of the button is going to be, of course, on the input side. 
And you'll notice that we have this start button, we have start two, and then we have no name. And here we can test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on the controller button. And as you can see, the status uh, comes on. Now I know exactly that this button is going to be controlled by digital input zero. So what I can do is I can go back into my controller. All right, so now what we need to do is add those IO points into our tree. So I'm going to right click, click on add, give this a name. So we're going to call it Groove Epic. Next, I do need to select the right ethernet, um, ethernet controller that we're using. I'm going to press okay. And we'll notice that the Everything can be added automatically. So let's click on OK. And we do need 2192.168.101. We need to add an IP address, press OK. So you'll notice that the IO modules can be automatically detected and added. We're going to click yes. Four modules have been added just per our controller. I can expand this and you'll notice that there's not going to be anything specified in here. Now, what we need to do is add those points manually. So what I'm going to do is click add. And as I've mentioned, digital input zero is going to be not used, but we're going to double click this, we're going to have a pop up here, we can name this start button. Default watchdog, everything okay, communication, okay. We're going to close out of this. What I'm also going to add while while we are here is the outputs. So I want to go back into our interface, back to modules. And here on the digital outputs, what I'm going to do is essentially create a sequence from output seven all the way to output 12. So seven to 12 are going to turn on sequentially. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.